Welcome to this week's edition of the Dixie Sun News at Noon. I'm Monique Chavez. And I'm Kiera Parham. Thanks for tuning in. Dixie State University is calling all students to be a part of its next TikTok video. This video is to unite the DSU community from wherever they may be. Those interested in participating have just three steps to follow. Wear red or Dixie gear, film yourself doing the two claps and slide hand movement, and direct message your video to DSU's official social media accounts. All videos must be in before midnight tonight, so don't wait. Dixie State University is offering all students the option to receive a pass or no credit grade for spring of 2020. DSU Trail Tracker alerted students of the new option, as well as the extension of withdrawal until Wednesday, April 22nd. If students accept the pass or no credit option, their grade will not be counted towards their GPA. If students want to take this option, they will need to contact financial aid as well as their academic advisor. As the coronavirus pandemic begins to creep into every part of our lives, Dixie Sun reporter Coyote Caldrabuela found out how Dixie State is coping. Now that COVID-19 has created a great dilemma for all schools in the United States, which have also forced Dixie State University to put restricted access on its campus for all students, as well as prohibiting face-to-face -face interaction between the professors and the students. Today, we're going to be looking at how COVID-19 has impacted our DSU community, especially how it has impacted the field-oriented uh, programs and departments at the school. So our, our senior capstones, they're, you know, the culmination of your film degree here. So they're really important, especially to the directors who are bringing it together. Um, but we also had a full pre-production class who was devoted all of their time for the first half of the semester getting prepped for these shoots. And of course, you know, it was scheduled so that several of these shoots happened right after spring break. So they were just, they were ready, man. They had put some money into this thing. They had gotten props. They had gotten locations and actors and crew. Uh, they were an inch away from going into production. Um, right now, <clears throat> there's a lot of discussion about what's going to happen with that. Uh, in about a week, we're going to reassess. And if there's been any kind of um, changes in some of the guidelines that make it less stringent. We might allow for very minimal sets if students want to continue um, in a kind of a social distance set um, with some new sanitation protocols. So for instance, and this, and this is only potentially and it's, it's up to the admin, but <clears throat> you could have a situation if things loosen up where the sound person has to only touch the sound gear, no one else can touch the sound gear, and the camera mm -hmm. operator, only person who can touch the camera. And all sanitizing as they go. Exactly. And then sanitize it when it comes back into the cage. And then our workers will sanitize it when it goes back out every time. Being food services, we still have to cater to the few students that are still on campus because mm -hmm. um, they don't have the option to go home. Um, so we do have one of our locations still open um, for them to be able to still get food. We're delivering to them. Um, Which is Brookstop? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Brookstop is open. Um, but it's also been hard because just having one location open instead of the nine that we usually do, all of our part-time workers, as you know, don't have yeah. as many hours now, um, which is really hard for me to see because I really appreciate all of our employees and not being able to have hours for them is taking a toll on me. It's really like I'm most worried about my employees. Uh -huh. uh, as well as the students on campus, making sure that they're taken care of. Several over the years, the, the last big, big one was a couple of years ago. Um, that was the Alex Boya one? Yes, and this is a follow-up to that a couple of years later. And this one is specifically um, in celebration of going to Division One with athletics. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So how has COVID-19 impacted um, the production for this music video, for this year's music video? The biggest thing is it's just putting it on hold. Um, we're still on the back end. We're still uh, going forward with our plans, our preparations, um, making shot lists, developing everything we can on the story. Um, and when we get our students back in the fall, we'll be able to go ahead and, and film what we need to. For Dixie Sun News, this is Kaya Day, Kajikbala. Self-isolation can be hard when you're used to being active. Here's some tips from Red Cross on staying indoors and staying sane. Make regular phone calls to people you know. Post highlights of your day and share that positivity with others. Start a book that you've been holding off on. Check in with others who's also self-isolating. Watch movies virtually with friends and family. For more tips, visit redcross.com au. Being bored indoors might be the least of your worries if you aren't taking care of yourself. Here's some tips on staying healthy and fit. 
Staying healthy and staying fit while having to socially distance is not everyone's forte. However, we have some tips for you to stay fit, stay healthy, and stay safe while self-quarantining. There are benefits to staying home and working out. YouTube has lots of free workouts students can utilize while at home. It's simple. Search what you're looking for, whether it's yoga, kickboxing, or even Zumba. YouTube literally has it all. My personal favorite app is the Nike training app, and currently all of their premium trainings are free. Using gyms can get pretty pricey, but this one caters to at-home workouts with and without equipment. And since gyms are closed, you can turn your room into a fitness circuit. When you have the chance, head outside. Running, walking, hiking, if it's available, is a great way to stay active while you can do it socially. Just make sure you keep your space. Nutrition professor at Dixie State University, Brita Britchen, stated, Women need at least 9 cups of fluid per day, and men need 13 cups. Try to meet your needs using water or low-calorie beverages. Nutrition professor at Dixie State University, Debbie Mosher, stated, Try to reduce the amount of fast food that may be in your diet. Switch to healthy foods. Cook at home with ingredients we can pronounce. Adjunct nutrition professor at Dixie State University, Sarah Fawcett, stated, Give yourself time to be calm and do nothing on your device after 7 p.m. It's okay to be bored and to read an actual book. This helps calm the nervous system and let it heal. Be okay with not having to do things 100% of the time. With that being said, pace yourselves, trailblazers, stay hydrated, and be social at a distance. Washington County grocery stores are taking action to keep employees and customers safe. All Smith's locations have made the first opening hour exclusive to senior citizens. Lynn's Market and Albertsons have added a plexiglass barrier to each register, and Harmons is checking the temperature of every employee before their shifts. All store hours vary, so check before you go. Local food delivery is still an option for students. All dining and eating has been closed, but delivery services are taking precautions to keep their businesses open. Papa John's Pizza and Domino's Pizza are offering no contact carryout and delivery, and still maintaining normal hours. So one of the big things is, is that um, some of our locations have pickup windows. Uh, the one that services the college has a pickup window as well. Um, we also have um, the option to do a contactless delivery, which entitles um, basically just us setting your food down on top of one of our delivery bags um, in front of the door and then they step away for the, the customer to be able to open the door and pick up their order without having to have any contact with us. A local sign company is creating yard signs to help struggling businesses. Rainbow Sign and Banner on Riverside Drive is offering yard signs with pre-printed phrases such as We're Open, drive through Open, and Order Online. The business is also offering 50% off all banners, which gives businesses more personalization. When locked indoors, the great outdoors can seem like a great escape. While Utahns are being told to stay home and stay safe, many are finding refuge and comfort in the state and national parks. Because fees have been waived, Utahns are flocking outside, where some are considering crowding and lack of social distancing. Zion National Park has closed its campgrounds and the popular Angels Landing hike and stopped the shuttle service in effort to prevent mass crowding. Canyonlands and Arches have closed down completely. Governor Gary Herbert has asked Utahns to only visit parks in their own county. And now to Michael with a breakdown of fall sports. Back up the best, he's gonna score, twice in the arc, touchdown. Hey, what's going on, Trailblazers? With DSU Athletics transitioning to Division I coming July 1st, let's remember the best seasons and all-time records set in Trailblazers athletic program history. Starting with some cross-country, Billy Hatch from the women's cross-country team broke her 6K record three times in the same season, setting the all-time women's 6K record at 20 minutes, 26 seconds. For the men's cross-country team, Kyler Miller broke his 8K time twice in the same season, setting the all-time men's AK record, 24 minutes, 31 seconds. Keep on running, Kyler and Billy. Heading on to some football, last season the Trailblazers finished with a new program best with eight wins, finishing third in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And let's see if the football team follows it up next season, transitioning to Division I. Moving on to men's soccer, Moises Medina, Mr. Clutch, and the reason why I call him Mr. Clutch is because he owns the Trailblazers all-time career record with the most game-winning goals with 15. As you can see on your screen, Voices Bedina scores his game-winning goal against Westminster College in the RMAC tournament. If you hear his number get called, for sure he will deliver. Passing the assist to women's soccer, the Trailblazers made some history last season. DC earned its second NCAA Division II 
tournament berth in program history. Also, the Trailblazers won the South Central Regional title and advanced the National Quarterfinal Round, aka the Lead Eight. Definitely a tough season to follow up, transitioning to the Western Athletic Conference next season. Diving into women's swim, it seems Hannah Hansen improves every year at every race and it shows in the all-time record books. A couple of records that Hannah Hansen owns in the record books is in the 100-yard breaststroke with 1 minute and 3 seconds, in the 200-yard breaststroke with 2 minutes 17 seconds, and the 100-yard butterfly with 56.43 seconds. Hansen definitely left her mark as a trailblazer. Last but definitely not least, we have Volleyball with Lauren Gamble dominating defensively. Gamble owns a handful of defensive records and the one that's high up in numbers is her career total blocks with 424. Gamble is a defender that you do not want to be in the way of offensively. There you have it, the best season and all-time records in DC's fall sports portion of Division 2. Stay tuned next week for the spring sports portion of Trailblazers Athletics. Here's an update of what's going on in DC Athletics. The men's basketball team scheduled UC Davis as part of its 2020-2021 season schedule. The games against the Aggies will take place on November 14th, and that will mark the Trailblazers' first ever Division I home contest. Then on December 2nd, DC will travel to Davis, California to take on UC Davis at its home court. The Trailblazers will have their completed schedule for next season in the coming weeks. And that's it for this week's edition of the Dixie Sun News at Noon. We'll see you here next week, same time, same place. Have a great week, Trailblazers.